I made the decision to move back to Kuwait, where I was born. My attraction had always been um, to theatre as a medium, principally through um, the uh, uh, act of, of text. Text as a medium for performance was always um, the, the, the big draw for me in theatre as a medium. Um, so there was always this um, good tension, I would say, between the text and a written text that, that had been written by another author and the desire to interpret that as, as is the function of a director. But the, the tension in terms of the limits of interpretation and where those limits um, move into um, uh, the realm of authorship, I suppose, was always a tension that I found very uh, kind of compelling. So um, it was in the... Uh, I started the adaptation, as, as you remember, uh, Georgina, of the, the Hamlet work before the events of 9-11. 9 9-11 was an important um, moment in the <coughs> development of my work and, and my thinking about the work that I should be doing or might be doing. I was in Cairo, actually, when uh, uh, 9 the events of 9-11 took place. Um, with an adaptation of Hamlet. I was speaking about that adaptation that had recently been presented in the English language in Kuwait, and um, uh, we were going on to play it in Tunis. And I came back to the rehearsal room and said to the, the, the um, uh, creative team and the actors, I said, this, this piece can no longer remain as it, as it, as it has been to date, um, and it needs to be radically altered. And, and this began to sort of take the work into a kind of whirlpool of um, movement that, that moved around, I guess, uh, this radical shift in, in terms of um, both the relationship between uh, the Muslim world, the Arab Muslim world, and um, the West, but also then opened up this, this uh, uh, whirlpool of events that I felt that the theater that we were making had to be somehow part of and somehow relate to. Um, and it was in Tunis that we presented the second adaptation of that Hamlet that was, that was received very well in Tunis and, and understood very much as a kind of agitprop sort of uh, uh, use of Hamlet to speak about issues um, in a sort of metaphorical way uh, um, that the, the, the audiences in Tunis were very much attuned to. And it was when we presented that same piece in London a few months later to an English-speaking audience that um, I really understood uh, the, uh, the limits of the, the, the uh, ability of meaning to pass, through, to pass through adaptation. Because in London, um, absolutely nobody had a clue what it was uh, about this adaptation of Hamlet that might be at all interesting or at all compelling <laughs> or at all uh, uh, worthy of, of um, uh, any kind of uh, friction. And it was then that I understood that, that my own abilities as, as a director, purely as a director, respecting the words of the Shakespeare, respecting the structure of the Shakespeare, had reached a kind of um, uh, vital point. One of the reasons, I think, that Shakespeare was, was so... Was so uh, was so kind of potent as a, as a vehicle and as a source for a lot of the, the, the inspiration that, 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 that was around this trilogy. A lot of Shakespeare's um, work is really about working against, against, uh, super, against the superficial meaning and, and, and having other meanings released through the act of performance and, and, and preparing texts that, that can say one thing on paper and actually mean something else in performance. And, and that whole relationship with the Lord Chamberlain and the censor is something that, um, that I think is not negligible in terms of giving texture to, particularly to, to dramatic writing. But the other thing that's really great about Richard III as a play and the way Shakespeare wrote it is about a vacuum of power. It is about a vacuum of power. What happens when a king dies and the next, of line, next in line die and everyone dies or everyone's killed off and the and, and the only one left is a child. What happens when it's only a child? And um, so the, 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 the Council of Allegiance that was established in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia in 2006, 
around the time that we were uh, trying to formulate this is about that. And, and I mean, I dare say that the biggest challenge facing um, uh, the GCC countries today is very much to do with this issue of what to do with, the, with vacuums of succession. How does one overcome uh, the vacuums of succession? And, um, and so that's what led us to make this piece in, into a very sort of contemporary um, um, costume-wise and, and setting-wise, very contemporary setting. Often the, the function of political theatre is to sort of try to capture the conscience of the king. And, and, and a lot of people make the theatre to, to, in order to sort of instigate a notion of um, uh, guilt or, or, or conscience or to awaken that notion of, of um, uh, awareness. And so it was very interesting watching something like Richard, the, this uh, Arab tragedy, Richard III play, to, uh, to the president of Syria and his wife, and, and uh, on another occasion play at a command performance to, um, to a group of um, uh, princesses in, uh, uh, in Abu Dhabi. Uh, to, to, and because the relationship also between what's being presented and the people watching it is very different than when you present it in a much more democratic arena, um, as is the case when you, you know, present it um, to, to, to the general public, either in the Arab world or, or indeed in, in, through subtitles overseas. Well, the subject matter is so much closer to the, to the lives. And when we were in El Ain, it was um, a very extraordinary situation we were asked to perform for the crown prince's wife and her 400 closest friends who were all women and they they brought in security guards to check that there were no men anywhere the technicians were locked up in a, in a special room but for some reason it was all right for the male performers to be in as close proximity as i am to you now because i suppose the idea was well they're acting therefore they're not somehow in, in relationship. And for many of these women, it was the first time they'd ever been to the theatre, and it's Richard III. So every time something bad happened, they all started praying. And um, it made me see the play through a completely different light, because it made me see the play through the eyes, of the, through the female characters. Because actually, this was the reality of a lot of these, these women's lives. They were just pawns in a political game.